Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming to another video. All right, so, of course, game time is going to be at 5.30 today. The Lakers are playing the Nuggets, in case anybody doesn't know what's going on in the NBA playoffs. It's the Western Conference Finals. My team is involved. We're down 0-2 with the series shifting back to our house. I encourage everybody to check out my pregame video that I made early this morning. And, of course, I want to address you guys again before the game begins. Um... Listening to a little bit of what I said this morning, I got like 15 minutes through the video and realized I wanted to make another one too. Uh, so what 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 I realized I didn't speak enough about is uh, when you assess the Los Angeles Lakers team, one of the things that made our trade so good, the trades that we made, was that Malik Beasley was such a dynamic three-point shooter. When we first made that trade, we had him in regular rotation, and he was capable of blowing a game wide open. We The first couple days of the trade, we thought we were on cloud nine because of his piece along with everybody else. Him being removed from the situation makes us a significantly worse team. Not saying that him in real life being removed because the way we were using him was bad and we weren't getting none out of him. But just in terms of on paper, he's supposed to be counted for regularly and supposed to be a dangerous piece coming off our bench or even in the starting lineup. That's what he's supposed to be on paper. And the fact that he's been removed from the situation, that's part of what makes us a worse team. His threat not being even an option. That's a, that takes away a good portion of what makes that, paper, that team on paper exactly what it's supposed to be. When you remove that piece, assuming if you look on paper, he's not there. Now what we are is a team that's not as good to shooting the ball. Um, and one of the things that I've been noticing in this series is the fact that the Denver Nuggets are shooting the volume three-point shots um not so they're not shooting at a volume they're shooting a higher percentage and they're hitting more of them regularly if we could have gotten the regular 10 or 12 points out of malik beasley from behind the arc that we're supposed to be getting from a night-to-night -night basis uh we would be a significantly better team and probably would be more comparable to what it is that i see in my head about who we are as a team and so these are things that i'm thinking about you remove Winnie and Gabriel from the equation, now we're not as good as a rebounder either. Moving uh, Troy Brown from the situation, now we're not as long of a team. We don't have as much defensive help. Now we have situations where you're forced to get guys the ball because they need to score more. You know, he, he doesn't take away from the scoring in any way. You don't have to look for him to score the ball. So it diversifies your offense a little less and makes it so that you can get more from AAD, more from D'Lo, more from Austin, and player looks like that when Troy's on the floor because you're not going to go to Troy. But he's not deficient, so it's not that you're trying to avoid going to Troy like you would with Vando. Anyway, this is this is just me brainstorming our team a little bit and trying to assess how the Denver Nuggets are actually better than us right now. And the, the reason why they're better than us right now is because we've chosen eight players to go up against their eight players and i don't think that that's the right way to approach making us as good as we are i've always said this though this isn't new content i said the sum of our parts makes us as good as we are it's the same thing i said about a lot of these deep teams if you have a team that goes 12 or 13 deep and you shrink your bench going up against another team that only goes eight deep you're dumbing yourself down to them now, if your system doesn't allow for you to match up with them properly, blah, 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 you got to figure out something to make it so that more of what you are good at, which is having more depth, is present in these games every day. It's why we suck right now, based, based on what it is that I've surmised anyway. It's a lot of different things, including Jamal Murray and, and Jokic being great against us. But we're not that good of an eight-man squad. We're really good as a 12-man squad. And so that has to be identified from team to team to team from coach to coach to coach to identify you on my roster if i shove up those four eight players we're not as good but if we pull back and get into 10 and 12 now we have more attributes that make the vision of the team more so what you see on the floor rob palenka's vision for this roster is not being realized on the denver nuggets floor because we've removed the wrong pieces from the equation malik beasley needs to be involved in this thing even though he can't hit a shot he needs to be that piece in order for us to be as good. If he can't be that piece, then next year we need to replace him with someone we can rely upon to do that so that the vision of this roster can be straight. Um, draft Hawkins, I don't care what you do, but make sure that shooter is in place. Um, 
See, because because you don't have the fullness of the of what it is that your roster is supposed to look like. It's like you trotting out there without half your guns. You know what I mean? You trotting out there without half your armor, and you wonder why you're getting your butt whooped. The Denver Nuggets are showing you everything they have, man. That's all they got. They took every they took they shoved everything of their best stuff and they shoved it to the top of the of the food chain and said we're gonna we're gonna carry it home. Everybody else chill out. DeAndre Jordan, Reggie Jackson, old Clippers, sit down. We're gonna carry you to the ring. And so it's like, yo, we don't have a roster like that. We're not better doing that. We're better doing the opposite of that. We're better saying, yo, you up, 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 and throwing a million people at those eight guys. That's what makes us better than the Nuggets. It's what we haven't done. So that's what I really wanted to bring to the table first and foremost. We're looking at this all wrong. And because we're looking at it all wrong, we're only coming in at half, half mass. It's like tying your hand behind your back and then going into a boxing ring. That's what the Lakers are doing to themselves. So we have got to get Winyan, Troy. I don't know about Malik. If he can't hit a shot, you sit his butt down. But we need to have these guys be a threat so that we can take advantage of the fact that we do have more to throw at Denver than Denver throws at us. Otherwise, we're throwing eight at eight, and they're kicking us with their eight. They got a better eight right now. You know what I mean? So, But they don't have a better 12. So the key to trying to expand this series is not only obviously winning this game, but understanding that and then reincorporating starting the process of incorporating that mentality into our series and as they continue to throw the same eight out there we throw 10 12 14 fresher legs into the game we're in a more advantageous position to have the energy necessary to close these close games out that we've been losing you know what i mean and so that's where i'm at obviously there's a more easy way to approach the situation that's just saying yo anthony davis lebron james be superstars tonight be superstars for real make every shot hit every, you know we can ask our superstars to step up and be better but the reality is they haven't been better than the other superstars i don't care what you say or what i say that's just what's going on down there jamal and jokic 80 and braun it's not he's not even right now it's not even it's not really even at all so at this point i'm not looking at my stars and my stars want to show up and play great basketball, then they'll carry me to an easy victory. But I don't have that luxury right now. I got a team, a full team, that can beat the Denver Nuggets. Not superstars that can beat the Nuggets, a team. So if we use ourselves as a team, I think we'll beat the Denver Nuggets. But if we go out there saying, okay, our stars need to do more, all they're going to do is brick more shots. <laughs> they're, they're cold, both of them. All they're going to do is brick more shots. So that's really what it comes down to. I don't care for Braun and AD going for 30 shot attempts tonight. That's not what's moving me. I want to see the guys who've been hitting shots hit shots. Rui's been hitting shots. Austin's been hitting shots. Give them dudes more opportunities to get looks tonight if that is still the case. Or if that's not the case, get a ball who to who is. But but make sure we're doing things that are absolutely working and sticking to those things if 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 it makes sense to do so. Which generally it really does. <laughs> if something's working, you know what I'm saying? Keep doing it. So, uh, that's what's on my mind in regards to that. <sighs> yeah. And Anthony Davis, of course, we want our stars to play better. Just the same. I think I've been really, really soft on AD, and it's because I just think I have a fuller understanding of what he's dealing with, just like I said about D'Lo, and just like I say about Bron. You know, those guys are dealing with a lot. They're dealing with injury. They're dealing with pressure. They're dealing with fatigue. They're dealing with the fact that our coach isn't using enough of their backups to give them a rest. It's all kinds of crap. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're dealing with Jokic, Porter, and Murray. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's a real thing. And we need to be real about it. Uh, KCP, Bruce Brown, those guys are coming at us. Which is why we need to put adequate defensive players on the floor uh, to come at them just the same. You know what I'm saying? And, and not punt defense, not punt rebounding, and not be so reactionary to the adjustments that we're making that we forget to continue to do things that make us push the issue toward them. <laughs> Yes, do we need to adjust to their geometry? For sure. But are we doing enough to force the issue so that they make adjustments? Are we doing enough to make them react to us? Because right now, it seems like all we're doing is reacting to them. And that, from a perspective of a team that has more than them, uh, that don't make no sense to me. That makes no sense at all. So uh, size matters, man. If you want to go small, you're going to go home. We don't, it's, we don't have to fly back to Denver at this point. Old people know that. Things don't have to work out. If this guy want to continue to do three guard lineups and we want to continue to do things that don't work schematically, believe you me, this ain't three months ago. You will go home. <laughs> lose this game, lose next game. Denver doesn't even have to play any more games with us. They go straight to the finals. You know, the, the, the East Western Conference Championship trophy will be hoisted on our floor on their behalf. 
know what I'm saying? That's how that go. So I need people to understand that even though we've played two close games and we've had situations where we felt like we felt like we could win after the first game, we were really confident and all that stuff. That's fool's gold, man. You got to win these games. I don't care what type of moral nothing, no moral victories. The moral victories is a joke. People are laughing at us because we're taking pride in the moral victories. And I promise you, if you continue to take these moral victories, we only lost by one tonight. We only lost by three in game four. Trust me, you're going to be going home still looking to get better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Still looking to get better in the season. It ain't going to be no games left to play. Don't drop this basketball game because at that point, you're fighting for your limit, uh, fighting for your lives for the rest of the series. Going back and forth to Denver, I can assure you, we're probably going home after that. <laughs> Most people do go, think we're going home now. Most people think we couldn't lose game two. You know what I mean? So I, I just tell the Lakers to go out there and show that they're as good as the Denver Nuggets. We are too an undefeated team at home, which means they got a tall task trying to beat us in this building. So if we're going to do what we got to do, um, we'll, we'll see the results we're looking for. Uh, but if we don't, we'll be down 0-3, and we'll be talking about all types of other stuff that, that, that has to do with making this a respectable series but not necessarily winning it. You know, coming out with some pride and getting a victory uh, so that we can feel good about ourselves going into next season. That's going to be the conversation we lose tonight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's going to be about trying to get a victory against the Denver Nuggets so that we don't get swept. You know what I mean? I, I know better than to come here telling people that it's it's fine right now. Like, like everything's good. It's not good. <laughs> but we ain't like we gotten blown out by this team over the last two games. It's not like we didn't overcome blowout circumstances in game one. It ain't like we didn't do some uncharacteristic stuff in both games. Things that we can correct that won't allow for them to have the same looks that we did in the first game. But maybe we close those holes and open some more, Darvin? Is that what your plan is? <laughs> like, I can't seem to have a whole lot of faith after watching the first two games. So he told me to trust him. Two games. I trust you. I'm here. You know what I'm saying, Darvin? But, brother, I was not at all playing about you need to win a championship with this roster. I wasn't playing about that. <laughs> I wasn't playing about that at all, Darvin. I know you're a rookie coach, but, brother, we've seen so much small ball and so much stuff that makes me wonder what the heck is really going on behind the scenes. That I don't really want to see another year of this if we don't win with this awesome roster. Because if we give you a roster that's worse than this, you ain't going to win with that. Let's just be honest. And I'm just going to be real about that. If he can't win it with this roster, what the heck do I think he's going to do in his sophomore season with a team that has more of its salary pushed into more players? You know, less, less players, whether we're going to have fewer players that are of quality because more of those guys are going to be getting paid. It's just, you're not going to be as deep next year. So if you can't realize the depth that you have right now, next year, it won't be there. So you can use your little eight players over and over again if that's what you want to do because that's exactly what we're going to have when we pay Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, and D'Angelo Russell, whoever else you're going to pay. So that's the reality of it. The depth we have is a luxury we're not taking advantage of, and it ain't one we're going to have for very long, especially if we lose these two games. So, again... The sum of our parts make us as strong as we're going to be. Being intellectually competitive in our nature ain't just about winning on the basketball floor X's and O's. It's about making sure you take care of the things in between the game. Calling good timeouts. Stopping stuff when it's going wrong. Darvin Ham, we need you to stop stuff when it's going wrong, fam. <laughs> With all due respect to you, and I mean this, you're not Phil Jackson, brother. Phil Jackson will leave people on the floor to figure things out. It doesn't work when you do it. They don't figure nothing out. We end up losing. Stop people from being harmful to the squad d low out there stinking it up sit him down just like we said beasley earlier in the season if he wasn't getting it done gotta sit him down we've done better since we've done those things so it shouldn't take as long to stop something that needs to be stopped at this point we've seen the success in doing so so anyway i, I get frustrated saying such re you know ridiculous stuff in this camera but i mean when the team behaves as if it doesn't understand what helps itself you kind of got to speak to it like it's a six-year-old you know do good things good things happen like I don't know, whatever. Digging purposeful holes to try to make themselves look triumphant is going to leave them at the disadvantage against a very good team. And um, that is really what it is. You better get it right and choose to and want success for yourself or you will be the losers that people call you. And, and Denver's making us all look funny out here. And when I say funny, I mean it's embarrassing. They're having a good time basically making Laker fans eat their words about how they feel about the team. And, and all the pundits that are speaking about the Lakers, it's, it's, it's a running joke is if we are supposed to be um you know uh, ashamed of, of the support and, and and of the attention that we've garnered over the years i'm not ashamed of kobe bryant i'm not ashamed of magic johnson i'm not afraid of shaquille o'neal i'm not ashamed of kareem abdul jabbar 
You understand what I'm saying? I'm not ashamed of those players. So why am I going to allow the Denver Nuggets, Mike Malone, and anybody else in this country to make us feel bad about the attention that our superstars have garnered with fantastic careers worn in this uniform? That's why everybody wants to talk about the Lakers first, because we've done it. We had guys that played amazing in our uniform and won championships in Los Angeles. You know, and that means more to the world because it's Los Angeles. And anybody who's jealous about that, I am sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's expensive to live out here, so you're going to pay for it if you do. But the point is, is that's what it is. It's L.A., man. It's one of the main hubs on the planet. There's about three cities in the planet that everybody knows. L.A., New York, and what is it, Tokyo or something like that? That's what it is. So if you're not going to respect that... <laughs> And you're, going, you're in Denver and you want people to give you the same attention that L.A. is getting, you're going to be upset for the rest of your life because it's not how it works. That's just not how this works. If they talk about the Denver Nuggets only, it will only be a small portion of people who normally watch them that will pay attention to that. I'm sorry, it just is what it is. Jokic is a very interesting player. And because of him, he will garner the attention necessary that his greatness will provide you. But don't expect people to flood up there to be giving all kinds of views on Denver Nuggets stuff. That's just not how it works, bro. And so because it doesn't work that way, us being attacked for it, you know what I'm saying, is, is offensive. As a Laker fan, as a real Laker fan, one who talks about this team every day, I don't want to hear that from opposing coaches. I don't want to hear that from anybody. You know what I mean? And so that's how I feel about that. And I've also spoken against some of the unnecessary chatter in regards to the Los Angeles Lakers. Sometimes I don't want to hear about my own damn team, especially if they're not going to say anything positive, especially when they show blooper reels of our players every morning. You see what I'm saying? So... <laughs> I don't think all the attention that, that the Lakers receive has been good. I think some of it has hurt us. It's helped us. It's kept us from being able to build properly. It's kept us from being able to win. It's kept us from getting certain things that I think would otherwise make the game pretty easy for us. You know what I mean? And I like easy. You know what I mean? But I also like the attention as it pertains to keeping revenue and keeping our, our fan base strong and keeping people understanding what it is that we're standing for, which is a lot of good stuff. It ain't just, you know what I mean? The Lakers is a good organization, so it ain't like they, they're not deserving of good uh, attention on their team they've delivered 17 times on top of that it's not just la that's garnering that attention as i've said so i i, I don't like the narrative i don't like people scolding us like we don't have real diehard fans here like we don't have people that bleed purple and gold just like anybody else in chicago or boston anywhere like that we are just as blue blood as any of y'all the media don't represent who we are we would be here if the lights went out either way just like we were here when the team was trash we're here when the team is great we're here when we win the finals we're here when we lose in the finals and we do not tolerate disrespect on any level. Win or lose, you are going to hear from us. And so that's how I feel. Dylan Brooks, Mike Malone, all of these guys. I don't know what's in the water in the NBA, why people want to be jealous of the Los Angeles Lakers. I guess they like it when we don't have a very good team because there wasn't nobody talking when, when Russell was running around. You know what I mean? When nobody complaining about the attention then when, some, when people are making fun of our players. But suddenly when we're getting some positive feedback for getting to the Western Conference Finals, after overcoming a 210 deficit, it's like people don't want, you know, they don't want to talk about our success. It, nah, they only want to, they only want to talk about us when the haters and the trolls are making fun of our players and coaches. But let me tell you, just like I say in time else, if the Los Angeles Lakers look in the mirror and realize who they are and start doing things that work for themselves, they're going to find out that they are to a very good basketball team. That Denver ain't the only very good basketball team in this series. And Denver ain't that much better than us. And if we would have had a whole season, with this roster, we'd probably be right up there with Denver at the one or two spot of the Western Conference all year long. And because I know this, I don't, I don't really feel like we need to be cowering to a very good offense. When I know we have a very good offense and a very good defense. So that's, that's where I'm at with that. And that's been where I've been with that. And I just wish my team could have won two close games, so it would mean a lot more when I say it. But they didn't. And so here we are. <laughs> Hoping that they can win a third win a first game in the third game, I should say, and uh, put ourselves in a position to at least be respected in this series as some kind of winners, some type of successful in this series. So it's still early. Only six teams have come back from down 0-2 to win the series. Two of them had LeBron James on it. That's to tell you right there that our chances of winning this series are a lot better than anyone else's, any, anywhere, anyone else's. Uh, however, he's been a big part of why it hasn't worked out. And the three-point shooting is a big part of that. Now, if he's going to continue to break three-point shots, he's going to continue to be sad at, these end, at the end of these games, man. I mean, it ain't deeper than that. It ain't just that you brick. It's that they turn into transition buckets. It's simple. We're a bad transition defensive team. You, 
bad shots turn into transition opportunities for the other team. I mean, what else do we need to say? One and one equals two. Let's not. Let's simply not. So that's really where I'm at with that, man. Um, Anthony Davis, you know what I mean? I need his defense to come back. I need his defense dominance to come back. A lot has been said about him not scoring the ball enough. But I think that, that that's not really where he's ever consistent. That's that's not scoring can be anywhere from seven points to 60 points. You just you're not getting consistency out of Anthony Davis scoring the ball. It's just a flaw of his game. And rather asking him to overcome these flaws in the Western Conference Finals, I just want him to overcome um, the, 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 the Denver offense. That's what I want him to overcome. You've got to stop Jokic in every way possible. Read what you need to read out there and react very fast and accordingly. Get as many deflections and blocks as humanly possible. I need him to be a block surgeon tonight, just like he was against the Memphis Grizzlies and at times against the Golden State Warriors. If he's a block surgeon and he's getting upwards of five and six blocks, uh, that's going to cater to our overall defensive success, and that's going to cater to us getting in transition and attacking them. So I need Anthony Davis to step all the way up in that way. Offense, attempt 15, 16 shots, whatever. Make quick and easy, quick quick passes if double teams come. All that type of stuff is is important. But for me, I want him to block shots and rebound the ball. Block shots and rebound the ball. If he's giving me over 15 rebounds and over four blocks, I guess we're in good shape. Um you know what I'm saying? And that's what I think I can expect from Anthony Davis. Uh, so that's, that is that is where my head is. KCP, I, you know, he's comfortable in this building. Obviously, he's won NBA championship with our team, although that building was actually in Orlando. Bubble, never knows. He's played plenty of seasons in our building. He knows his building like the back of his hand. In fact, he's shot more in our building than he has in his own, being that he played for our team about four years, and he's only been with Denver for two. So that should tell you that I'm not worried too much about him if I'm the Denver Nuggets missing shots in this building, which means we're going to have to play it by ear. And if he gets hot, uh, cut that off. You know what I mean? If he gets hot, cut it off. Um, simply put, he is a good player, but he should not be going for no 30 points tonight. That that should not happen. If he goes for over 20 points, he probably lost. So these are things we need to be aware of, man. We don't want them scoring over 112 points tonight. <laughs> we really, really don't. When they scoring upwards of 130, 135 points, believe you me, it's going to be very difficult for us to keep up with them. You know what I mean? It's difficult. We don't really score over 100, over 125 points. It's about as much as you're really getting out of us. So, you know, I don't want us uh, punting the defensive end in any way. Um, we have to be effective, and we have to be big, match up properly, and do what works. So that is where my head goes, man. I'm excited. I'm not nervous. I'm not nervous. Um I'm 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 upset that we're in this position. I'm upset at the disrespect that I feel that we've received. Uh, but as far as the jitterbugs and like, oh my God, we could, I just it's just not coming to me in that form. I'm more angry than anything else, and I want my team to respond with a certain level of, of a chip on their shoulder. I want us to respond with a chip on our shoulder, and um, I really don't want to lose a close game, man. That will be a, sig a, a signal that we can't beat them if we lose a third straight close game. You know what I mean? So obviously if they blow you out, it's the same thing. But the most important thing is that if you have a chance to win, make sure damn well that you do. And so that's that's what I got to say, man. I don't really want to harp on stuff that's already been said. We just need to crash the glass to get back in transition. We got to solve our transition issues. Uh, it's been a big problem in this series. So Vando on Murray has worked in very, very dramatic ways. Pulling him off of him has failed us in very, very dramatic ways. Sort of like the D-low plus minus discrepancy. It's very glaring. Certain things just need to be patched up. And those two things need to be absolutely patched up. So that's where my head is. Salute the Kobe minute. We're going to need all the good vibes from up above to help us tonight against the Nugs. That's pretty much what I got to say. My name is BDL44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.